Thanks for joining me. Today we once again have our 6x6 six six on the table. And even though I have the 6x6 six six here, this video is really about something else. It's about the wheels I'm putting on my 6x6. Six six. I decided to go with these Injora beadlocks that I picked up off Amazon. I picked up a total of two sets of them, since it is a 6x6, six six, and this way I have one extra for the spare. The reason for going with this video is a lot of people I see posting online have questions about how to mount this style of beadlock. Where it has all of these bolts around the outside edge. There seems to be some confusion on how to mount these. So I decided to make a video that shows you how to mount these easily and quickly. First, let's take a look at these wheels. These are black centers with the black rings. I had initially ordered gray with black, but they came in black and black. But after talking to the seller, we decided that was okay because this was my second color choice anyway. They use six screws on the back to hold them in, along with the standard bolt through hub. But around the front, there's a whole bunch of hardware to hold the rings on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through how to mount these. This should be a quick, easy video and should get you mounting your rims and tires in no time if you have this style of wheel. should save you a lot of headaches. So first thing I'm going to do is take the tires off the stock SCX-10 wheels here. They are just pushed on there. They're not even glued down. So I see pull all those off and then I will go through on how to install them. Now it is time to assemble one of these wheels and tire combos. Make sure you have something to keep all your little nuts and bolts in, as well as a good set of drivers. These are from MIP. The first step is we have to do a little bit of disassembly. Let's flip the wheel over and see in the back these two screws right here. Let's go ahead and take them out. That way we'll separate the halves of the wheel. Now that we have those out, we'll just pull the wheel apart. This is the back ring, this is the front, and this is the locking ring that goes inside the tire. So the next step here is to go ahead and put this inside our tire. You want to take your time and make sure you have it centered up inside there and make sure that this bead right here sets down over top into this little lip right here. It's good to go ahead and get it set in there so that the tire can kind of set around and get used to it being in there while you get the rest of the screws started. Now a mistake a lot of people like to make is they like to take this these two screws right here out and remove this ring from this inner ring right here from the front face. Then they want to take this and put it inside the wheel and try to put in all these screws to squeeze this down. That is not how you want to do this. On some tires, like say J-Concepts for example, this bead right here is real thin, so you can go ahead and tighten all the screws down around this ring and then put it in there. But on these Pro Lines, where, or any other tire that has this bead right here where it's a little bit fatter, a little bit thicker, what you want to do is take your driver and loosen these two screws up right here so they stick out about one head's width. See there? Just about the width of the head. And we'll go ahead and do the one on the other side. And what they'll do, they'll give you just a little bit of wiggle room whenever you go to put this together. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and go around the outside here and put all the screws in at that depth. So they all stick out about the thickness of the head. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. And there we go. They're all in the same depth and like I said gives a little bit of wiggle room here. If you go around and try to put all these in while fighting against the rubber, it is a nightmare. 
I see people asking all the time online, how do I put in all these screws to hold down the tire? This is how you do it. Like I said, on thinner tires, you can go ahead and tighten them down all the way. But on these Pro lines, it has to have that little bit of wiggle room. It just makes life easier. So now then you just got to line up in here. Make sure this rubber is sitting back on here. If it's sitting down over top of this, it can be a real bear to get these to go in. So just make sure everything's sitting where it belongs. And then just gently put this in. Like so. And now I'm going to show you how to put the back ring in. Okay, now we can do the back. And this is the reason for the paper towel is so when we flip this over, we don't scuff the front surface of our wheel. So we'll make sure once again that your bead is sitting nicely in here. Now if you have a padded work surface, you won't need this, but this one is not padded, so we're using a paper towel. Cloth, anything can work. Anyway, now you set this down in there. It will be a little bit of a fight to get it to go through because of this thick bead on this pro line, but you want to try to make sure that you get these holes lined up. Something you can do to make it a little bit easier is take a smaller nut driver and just make sure it goes evenly down through them. So now let's take one of your screws. Put it in the hole and you're going to push down hard on the ring to get it down where it needs to go to reach that difference to get down into the hole to tighten it down. I find it sometimes easier once you get down there to push on the back of the nut driver while twisting on the front. You just need one or two threads. There you go. Then rotate and do the one straight across from it. If you need to, this is where you can take your nut driver and wiggle it just a little bit to get it to line up better. Once again, you want to push down, hold it on the top, and I say on the top. I mean right here. Like I'm pushing down here while twisting here. And once again you just want a couple threads. Now you're going to go and do that all the way around the tire. A couple threads on each one. We don't start tightening it down yet. Okay, now once you have them all started, we're going to go ahead and pick one of them, say this one, and we're going to give it a few turns, turn it down about halfway, and we're going to come straight across and do the same thing. And then here, it's kind of just putting a tire on a full-size car. We're doing the crisscross pattern so that the pressure is even across the entire locking ring. Now we're going to go around the whole set again, tightening it down all the way. We're just making them snug. We're not really torquing on them yet. And this is where it's important to use a good set of drivers because if you're using a cheap set and really apply a lot of force to them, you'll round out the heads. Very important before giving it the final tighten is to look around the front and make sure this bead is still sitting correctly. Now we're just going to go ahead and tighten these down all the way. And even though we know these are tight now, once you run these wheels for a battery pack or two, 
it's best to go over all the bolts to make sure everything's still tight. Okay, now we're just going to go ahead and go all the way around the outside, tightening all of them up again. I like to pick one that's crossed from one of these bolts in the middle or next to one of the markings on the tire and start with it as my first one. So we're going to go right here. We're going to tighten this one down. And then we're going to move straight across from it and tighten this one down. Kind of like a 10 and 6 if you look at the face of a clock. Or 12 and 6, I guess I should say. After we get our 12 and 6 done, we then want to do a 3 o'clock. And a 9 o'clock. And take a look at the bead again, make sure it's still sitting nice. And now what we'll do is just alternate one, 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 just going around in a pattern, tightening, tightening them all down. I'm not going to make you watch me do each one of these individually, so we'll just kind of speed through this real quick. After I get the first four started. See how I'm just going next to the ones we already have tightened down? Like so. Okay, now just to finish this off. After you're done, give it a little pull around the bead locks, around the bead here, to make sure everything stayed in where it belonged. Okay, she's nice and tight and mounted up, and that's all there is to it. Makes it nice, quick, and easy to mount the tires onto this style bead lock. I said most people want to put each one of these in individually and fight that ring down. You do not have to do that. Next step is just to go ahead and put the lug nuts in here to hold the hub. On this tire here, it's going to be my spare, so I'm going to remove these two so I can remove the hub and mount this as a spare through some kind of holder through the middle. Because let's be honest about it, a spare is not going to have lug nuts in it. I hope you enjoyed this little how-to. I um, hope it helps you mount your next set of wheels and tires together. And if you like this, go ahead and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future updates. Next up here on this 6x6, we just need to do some finish work on the bed, make some bed mounts, and figure out exactly how I'm going to mount this into the bed of the truck. Probably make something kind of like that. Make sure you follow us on Instagram so you don't miss any of the updates as this truck comes along. There will be another video or two of this truck, I'm sure, but there will be a lot of things that you'll miss if you don't follow us on Instagram. The link that's down below, also the link to our Facebook. If you have any questions or comments, we'd like to hear them, and we'll do our best to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, happy RCing.